Hello and welcome, today we have the finals week 3 predictions. The top 8 has been sliced in half and we are reaching the pointy end of the final series. These fixtures will decide who reaches the final week in September, let's begin. We commence with the Friday night fixture that'll see Geelong face Brisbane. Geelong will be a refreshed side, and the week off allowed older players to get rejuvenated and some players to fend off injury worries. There's still a few who remain 50-50 but they should be heading into the weekend, more likely than not to play. Their opponents the Lions are waiting on a Jared Berry verdict, who played a pivotal role in the Lions win last week. His second half was colossal as he shut out any Clayton Oliver influence whilst it couldn't be any more different for Berry and what he delivered. The Lions have left their best footy for the right time of year. Started off quite slowly against Melbourne, but their ability to chip away and get those goals on the quarterly sirens meant that Melbourne always held an element of nerve and the Lions headed into breaks with belief they could win. All the outskirts players that got brought in the last couple weeks have stood up. Darcy fought for McInerney, held Max Gorn down, made himself present at the contest and hit the scoreboard. Tom Fullerton for Joe Daniha, not an eye-catching performance, but the move arguably allowed Eric Hipwood to take the reins and flourish. Darcy Wilmot, difficult time of year to break into the team, but credit to the selection committee for not doubting his ability and his performances are faithful of that decision. Sprinkle that in with Lorch O'Neill, whose composure and cleanliness with the footy is remarkable. The one that springs to mind is the one where he tumbles to the ground but still is able to pick the ball up cleanly and contort his body for a graceful handball that released his teammate. I could name many others, but I think the most notable thing to remember is Brisbane's pressure. Having been flogged by 10 goals in both meetings, with pressure nowhere to be found, they were up for the task, albeit a slow start, and quelled any momentum the Demons had. Their big players delivered, their backline held up considerably well, and even at times when the Ds looked like they could potentially put a dagger in Brisbane's heart, their resilience remained constant. The two goals right at the end of the third quarter come to mind. We move across to their opponents and whilst Geelong were heavily challenged and at times put off their own game plan, they grinned out a result. Credit to them. Blitzarves and Atkins have been a revelation in the midfield and Geelong's forward line continues to thrive. Just when it feels like you cut off their sources to goal, they've always got another player to deliver. Cast your memory back to two weeks ago, and I need to shout out Gary Rohan. He's often notorious for abysmal finals performances, but the same could not be said against Collingwood. A few goals, including the one to tie the game in clutch time, by virtue of a huge pack mark, and this is what Geelong's been crying out for. Especially if their key forwards are going to be blanketed, and mind you with Brisbane's defensive form, it could potentially happen this weekend, players like Rohan, Close, Stengel, will all need to step up to the plate. I think if we look at the final goal they scored, you see gut running, you see game breaking ability, you see a knack and desire to bring the ball forward, and many would say that's where the transformation has come from this year for Geelong. Which seems crazy given they aren't getting any younger, but it really feels that's the last piece of the puzzle for Geelong and they haven't compromised any other part of their game to address this need. Scary hours. If we look at why Geelong will win, I summarize. Cohesiveness, defensively sound, and a potent forward line are all characteristics which makes me place the ledger on Geelong's side. To justify the upset, pressure levels, the man Lorchy Neal, hybrid forwards, role players, and lockdown defense will all need to be things Brisbane are firing on all cylinders with. I do find the Lorchy Neal dynamic fascinating. Geelong seemed to imply it'll be a team effort to shut him down, but you sense a second half move like Barry to Oliver could be on the cards if he gets away to a flying start. I will predict Geelong, all arrows point in their direction. Though we believe in miracles and Brisbane could easily pull it off, break their prelim finals bogey and see their first grand final action in just under two decades next week. We progress to Saturday evening. Sydney take on the Magpies. I'll begin with the Pies by saying that they are scary. Jordan Degoe I think is the real difference maker. Be critical of him all you want, but I think he's finally living up to the paycheck that has been rumored in trade talks. Damaging with breakaway speed out of the stoppage, and an aspect which makes him incredibly tough to stop is the off-the-charts strength he's got. He was busting through Fremantle's enforcements the whole night without relent. The ability to stand tall and just throw them off him and move forward. A number of players have stepped up as well. Mason Cox, whilst you could argue writing him off for those seven touch, one goal performances in the past, has repaid the faith of sticking by him and has had a big influence in the finals. Some good contested marks, smart around the contest and recognizing his limitations to help him make the right decisions. Whilst Collingwood were excellent and I've given them credit here, I can't ignore the fact Fremantle looked like they fielded a bunch of fringe AFL players that are best on ground in the VFL. Took too long to acclimatize to a finals atmosphere, and that's natural with a young side and no finals experience among them. That's potentially where Collingwood got the leg up on their opponents. 
but even so, their defensive efforts, their dash off half-back, their team play, from young and old, was pretty much sustained the whole match and inspired a big win. They made Fremantle look silly, and whilst it's high risk, high reward at first glance, Collingwood having made it their identity, look so well rehearsed that it's become second nature and can't be described as risk. Sydney have had a week off and they will be ready to go. Their win against Melbourne was an inspiring one. Their small forwards ran riot. Even at times when they fell behind, they seemed to hold firm, and if they could remain in touch they were always a chance. I loved how they were able to sway Melbourne away from their game plan and really place ease on their defensive structure. That said, when they did get exposed, their recovery was unbelievable. It's been replayed countless times, but the Robbie Fox denial when they seemed gone on that passage of play was spectacular, and being able to do that leaves the door only slightly ajar for opponents to capitalize on error. I think on paper the Swans don't look like the strongest team in the league with regards to personnel, but that's not what it takes. If you can deliver in the areas that matter when you're one-on-ones in the territory battle and execute what you've trained for, that's all that matters. And you need to be able to cope with the pressure. Putting my Carlton cap on, please Sydney do not falter to inexperience. I can't be asked seeing Collingwood in a grand final and witnessing celebrations that would follow a win. Don't give them that opportunity. If we look at why Sydney will win in summary, they are difficult to contain, being a well-rounded squad, they hold firm and they bring the heat. Stack this on top of the fact that there won't be 90,000 Pi fans to contend with, and they should have the upper hand. For Collingwood, if they can perfectly execute their game plan, the smalls get off the leash and a go it doesn't disappear, they've got every chance of pulling this off. As for my prediction, whilst Qantas and Jetstar won't stop Pi fans from intruding and potentially dominating the SCG atmosphere with those heavy air for prices, I still back Sydney to win. Whilst Brisbane flipped a regular season script against the Ds, I think the Swans, who haven't lost since about two months ago, need to be backed in more so from that viewpoint and what they've displayed in that time of dominance. That said, Collingwood have the winning formula in their possession and they are well equipped to send the Swans packing. That's all for our predictions this week, it's going to be an exciting weekend of footy. Share your predictions in the comments and show your support. Thanks for tuning in, see you next week for the last dance.